time and butterflies at this time. And so sometimes that works out, sometimes it doesn't work out. So, you know, we it's hard to get butterflies in the winter because when you let, let that butterfly go, it, it, it can't go outside. So uh, some lambs are doing that. But this is very comparable to what we've done in the ninth class, especially with the lambs. see if I could even find whatever that this amount had changed and at the time of merger it's been the same amount of the contract. How far we before that I don't know I saw how to make it that to that. So we would just 
respect to the request for approval of the contract. So we continue to talk out with the district with the CIS. Do I have any questions? Yes, sir. Yes. Could you answer, since we've been a partner with them, I'm all for getting all students to close in the gap and everything like that. How much have we achieved with this partnership as far as on that? Have you got any numbers showing that on the dropout or closing the gap? I do not, but I suspect Dr. Harper may be able to say it's a lot. And I'll mention, just in dropout, that we have about 30 students that have dropped out. If you look at dropout data, our dropout data is continuing to increase every year over the last six months. It increases. If you remember last year, our graduation rate was at an all-time high at 83.3%. And this year, it's going to increase again to an all-time high of over 85%. And so by the employment of graduation coaches, by the work that we're doing, I would say yes. And there's lots of, you know, we can get lots of data for the board on particulars of what it means for schools. But in my opinion, and Mr. Lane, you've heard me say this many times over the last week, in my humble opinion, the number that matters most is that graduation rate. When we're graduating over 85% of our students in four years, that's a tremendous accomplishment. So I think that's the biggest piece of data that shows that our relationship with the schools works. There's lots of intangibles there, but that graduation rate increases substantially. Thank you. 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 Thank you
it would probably cost us more money because our pay scale is higher than their pay scale. And it would actually cost us more money to do some of the same things that we have to do, uh, we would need to do. Uh, they can do it cheaper because they don't have the benefits and all that that you do working for the school system. So it is a tremendous bargain for the school system and for our county. The fact that we're bringing in outside money because we have this organization out there hunting for these grants. I think if you look at what, what these nonprofit groups can do, all you have to do is look over at the American Legion and see that what they've done about bringing in all kind of money to this county. Uh, we're going out to fundraising and teaching schools is doing that for us. We owe them a, a real debt of gratitude. Thank you. Chief Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve.
or are we going to be looking at the cost of doing that repair to us when some out, when an outside firm is doing that? We and, and I can't speak for Mr. Yarbrough and his team, but I, I, you know, I wouldn't think I've been in that building recently, and, and I'm not sure that it's in need of repairs or needs any repairs. Uh, we want to make sure just to go in there, and there may be some things for dirty purposes. You know, for instance, we may want to uh, put our new outside locks on there. To do that. There may be some things there, just like those that we put before. You know, we'll we'll definitely look at that. And that's it's, it's really too early, but we just had uh, Mr. Garbo and I have had a chance to go over there. We've been talking about it, and I went to business schools for, for all of last week, and, and, and we had lots of projects going on. So Mr. Garbo and I had an opportunity to go through there and walk through there and kind of look at that. And, but like I said, that you know, the purpose of this is just to kind of pull on board just in case there's some, some problems with that. We're just in, in the early negotiation for that uh, uh, project. What, what, what Chairman, board members, uh, again, just to, uh, this is not, we'll discuss our last meeting, just to review that, the town of Grove had a request today, uh, permanent right of way for a portion of Dogwood Drive, the Lord's Grove uh, Elementary School, uh, they need this, and we'll complete their uh, Dogwood uh, Drive construction project. Um, if you've noticed uh, in the agreement, we did ask a section uh, that really reserves the right to this Board of Education um, that, uh, in the future, could actually relocate that right away and also the uh, transfer of property ownership if needed. Basically, it just gives us the flexibility in the future that if we had to do a construction project in that area of campus, we would have the flexibility to uh, transfer this ownership back to our Cleveland County Schools. Uh, basically, it puts us in about the same position. This is basically our first project for the 1415 school year. Uh, Newfield, uh, they were in good shape in regard to our summer capital projects. Uh, we still have a few loose ends to tie up, but uh, 
pleased with uh, where we are as far as uh, day one of, of school. Um, so highlight some of those projects for you. Uh, the new bleachers and the wood floor system at Crest Middle has been installed. Uh, did speak with uh, Mr. Smith today at uh, Kings Mount Middle, and last week they had two sessions of orientation, and uh, those bleachers came in handy. I think he felt like they had about 85% of their students are represented by the representative that had orientation. So uh, if you're ever to buy, stick your head in the gym and, and look at that, that uh, gym looks good. Uh, the floor and work that we did at uh, North Elementary, which was uh, adding a rubberized flooring to their gym floor, as well as classrooms at uh, Brown and East, uh, that carpet replacement, uh, those are complete. Uh, the greenhouse project uh, that we partnered with the CTA at Kings Mountain High School, uh, still got some work to do there. We need to add a sidewalk, we need to complete their, uh, their uh, irrigation system, and uh, as well as assemble the, those uh, tables for that uh, greenhouse. Uh, Brown Elementary, uh, this summer we did replace about a 400 foot section of uh, main sewer line from their main uh, building. Um, basically, this eliminates the original uh, line, which is terracotta tile. We've been battling roots and that system for, uh, for a while now, so hopefully this new sewer line will eliminate those issues there at uh, Grand Elementary. Uh, Kings Mountain High School, their quad unit has been set up, it's in place. We had set the end of September as a schedule to have that ready for, for students and I think we're in a position to, to meet that schedule. Uh, we're still working with Duke Energy to get the, uh, the uh, electrical service in and then we'll do the uh, uh, underpinning and uh, set the uh, grants and steps. Um, Crest Middle School, the uh, IP phones there have been installed. They're using those. Uh, I think currently they're using both their numbers but hopefully uh, this Friday we'll convert over to the uh, Seven six numbers. So if you uh, ever get that, just move off our list as far as uh, IP phones. I know Mr. Bo Healer is still in the process of upgrading the lighting, the lights in the uh, CTE wing at Crest High School. Uh, I know the majority of those are in. We've got a few left in their uh, woodworking uh, shop area, and, and we'll work around them to complete that. Uh, PE lockers for Burns Middle School are on order. Uh, this project will allow us to replace and refurbish uh, all the lockers. Boys and girls locker room there at uh, Burns Middle School. Uh, we would really like to give you an update in regard to Title IX. Uh, Mr. Fisher, Dr. Fisher informed me that uh, Dale Rhines will be in town end of October to do a, a final meeting and come in to review our progress in, in regard to our non compliance issues. Uh, we still have uh, two projects that's coming together pretty nicely uh, the uh, softball dressing area at Kings Mountain High School. They're in the uh, stricken uh, constructions in the final stages of uh, about there today, uh, doing some electrical uh, work, uh, some, some painting. Uh, I know that there's going to be some punch list items that we'll have to address there, but I think we'll, we'll be able to meet that deadline. And then the, uh, the female field house also at Kings Mountain High School, uh, uh, lighting upgrades and the painting are almost complete. The lockers are in. We'll still have to do some work in the restrooms and do some uh, uh, bathroom uh, petition stalls that installation, but we should be in good shape for our, our visit with Mr. Lyons in the uh, end of October, and again, we'll keep, keep you up to date in regard to that process. Um, you can see a few safety and security projects. We're going to talk a lot about that, the things that's going on at our schools, but I do want to bring you, uh, make note of one uh, over at Shelby Intermediate. We've actually gone on that campus and, and added some security walls and doors that's really tied their three separate buildings together. We've actually created a little courtyard area that uh, I think is going to uh, you know, work out well there. I know the uh, administrators there are, are, are pleased with this project. But if, if you buy Chevy Intermediate, fill out a look at that. That's a, I've had that on the drawing board for a while. We're able to uh, be uh, close to having that complete. So uh, we've got a few other things we're working on. And, you know, we're constantly looking at our campuses and trying to enhance uh, school safety when we can. You know, we don't share everything out at this public meeting, but uh, you can see there in the report there's a number of things that's going on. And, and I know uh, Dr. Woods and her team and, uh, just have a you know, total team effort on, on, on this. Uh, also, one last thing to share with you. Chevy Intermediate, I talked with you in regard to the new drive for the uh, new uh, health department. You know, their schedule was to have it completed uh, a day one. A little behind, but we were able to leave the original drive on the north side of that campus. So uh, we're, we're, we have access to the front of that uh, school in regard to student drop off and pick up, and we'll be able to use that until their drive is complete. So uh, they got there early, so we work well today for the school. So uh, uh, I can say this that uh, being construction, they're great contractors, been great to work with, and some, some help us to, uh, to make 
saying there's some places where we may not have to have a teacher, you know, looking at class size, but that would not be the cost of transfer. Just refreshing on integrate what the class size limits are for the elementary level. It's a, uh, there's a, it has to be a district average of 21, K3, and cannot achieve, go over 25, is that correct? Just a little over for each. Kindergarten is a little different than one, yeah. one, two, three, but I believe it's, it's, it's the kindergarten is you cannot exceed 25 right. in, in a class. No matter what your district average is, you cannot have over 25. And then uh, grades one through three, your district average goes up a little bit, but you, you, can, you can't exceed that. And then after fourth grade, there's really no limit. Fourth grade, what is Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 